Be seated, everyone. We'll continue with the examination, please. All right. Where I think we left off, uh, we're still on Thursday, July 1st, going into the evening. Uh, we looked at the, the FaceTime Snapchat you took, and then uh, maybe some snaps that sent, were sent to you, baby, I need you, things of that sort, right? Okay. Correct. Um, and I, I think my last question to you, or in the last couple of questions, was um, did you know what Chandler was going to be doing that night? I don't recall. Um, but you weren't with him? I was not with him. Okay. Um, around that time, um, a couple things were going on, I guess, according to your testimony so far. Chandler was, was grounded in some respect? Correct. Did you have any knowledge from Chandler about how long he was grounded for or the duration of that? No, just that we weren't allowed to hang out. OK. So the weekend and the parents being gone was going to change that? Yes. Okay. These physical symptoms that we talked about with Chandler um, and the concussion, um, I think you'd mentioned maybe kind of having some leg issues and couldn't lift things, things of that sort? Correct. Were those all going on on that date as far as you know? Correct. OK. I'm going to show you what's been marked in this case is exhibit number 518, 519, 520. I'll direct your attention to the top right of that. 521, 522, 523, and 524. Um, in general, are these photos of Chandler? Yes. Um, and what action is he performing in these photos? Carrying large bags of ice. Okay. And to your knowledge, based on all of your conversations and observations of Chandler, um, on July 1st of 2021, um, was this activity, the carrying of ice, was that inconsistent with, with what you knew his physical limitations to be? Correct. Um, there's two bags, right? Yes. And at one point, they're both even in one hand, right? Yes. OK. I'm going to sit these exhibits aside for now. We're not going to receive them into evidence just yet. So if those photographs were taken the night of July 1st, that would be surprising to you? Yes. Okay. Going into the next day, the day before the, the weekend, I guess. So now we're into um, July 2nd, which is a Friday. Um, did you work as normal that day? Yes. Um, and kind of as, as before, um, maybe messaging with Chandler throughout the day? Yes. OK. Um, what were your general plans that Friday? Do you recall? Um, to stop at Target stop at my apartment, stop at my mom's home, and then go to Chandler's. Okay. And what were you and Chandler going to do? Um, hang out, okay. have a sleepover. Okay. Uh, were you excited about this? Yes. How long had it been at that time that Chandler had been in this being kind of grounded state where you hadn't seen him a lot? About two weeks. OK. As you left work that day, um, did you have to go to Target to pick some stuff up? Yes. Um, what were you picking up in general? Maybe I'll ask Five. a better question. Was it groceries? Yes. OK. I'm going to show you it's been marked as Exhibit 525. What is that? Pork chops, oat milk, cheese. Sure. Is this from uh, the Hilldale Target? Yes. Um, do you do the pickups at Target, or do you go in and, and shop? I do the pickups. OK. So like a lot of people during COVID, you've done the, the pickup thing where you order ahead? Correct. OK. And I'll move 525 into evidence. Any objection? No objection. It is received. It may be published. Not crazy exciting for everyone, but there it's the Hilldale Target picked up at 529. Um, Hilldale here in Madison, kind of down University Avenue, right? Correct. All right. Got a couple things some pork chops, some oat milk, some cheese, normal stuff, right? Correct.
Correct. But, but you didn't stop there. You went to another target, didn't you? Yes. Uh, how does that work that you end up at two targets in the same day? If something isn't available at one target, I will order it at another and then go pick it up from there. Okay. So you went to multiple targets. Correct. And so there we see Madison East target at 637, right? Correct. You got a watermelon. Yep. Awesome. Were you taking these things over to the Alderson house? Some of them, yes. Okay. And when you pick things up at Target, um, you've done this a lot, I would imagine? Very often. Um, do they put any sort of stickers or markings on the bag to indicate this is for you? Yes. Um, well, in general, just describe what goes on those bags. It is a barcode for them to scan after they receive my order, and it has my first initial and last name. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked in this case is exhibit number uh, 526. Maybe some more messages, um, but take a look at that. Does that appear to be text messages between you and Chandler there that day on the 2nd, uh, July 2nd? Correct. Starting in the morning? Yes. Okay, I'll move 526 into evidence. Subject to the standing objection, it is received. And so, in fact, kind of first thing maybe you say to him that day is you got to go to both targets for your groceries. Yep. That's 923. And then you're going to take some of them to your mom's. Yes. Tell me just real quick, and we're not going to talk about addresses, but general living situation at the time back in July of, of last year. Um, did you live with your mom? No. Did you have an apartment? Yes. And would you sometimes stay at your apartment? Yes. Sometimes at your mom's? Mm-hmm. Okay. Chandler says, okay, at 923. And then on July 2nd at 9 in the morning, after you talk about Target, can you read that message from Chandler to you? Don't rush. I have tons of chores they are having me do. You say okay. And then you talk about what you're having for dinner. Maybe burgers, maybe chili. Yes. Right. Okay. Talk more about what you're gonna have for dinner. He says, I don't know, what would you like? Um, and you say, depends on how long we see each other, talking about in general what you're gonna do and what you're gonna eat. You read what Chandler sent you on the 2nd of July at or just before 10 in the morning at 9.58. We could do dinner tonight and you can come over in the morning again and stay till Sunday night. Okay. Um, did that message strike you as odd of coming over, leaving, and coming back? Yes. Why? Because I was already gonna be there, and I thought our plan was for the whole weekend. Okay. So he says, that you could come over for dinner, and then the in-between what's not written, but your impression was you'd leave and then come back the next day. Can you say that a little louder, please? Sure. Was it your impression from this message that Chandler was telling you that you would leave that night and come back the next morning? Correct. Okay. So he says that, and then he, he says, like dinner plus the sex to you, right? Yeah. Okay. And you ask him, why leave and come back if I'm just gonna stay? And can you read Chandler's response? So I can get some chores done. Did you know what chores he was talking about at this time? I don't recall. I'm going to show you another exhibit marked 527 in this case. Um, just in general, do those appear to be more text messages between the two of you on July 2nd? Yes. I'll move 527 into evidence. Any objection? No objection. They are received. 
they may be published. Considerable discussion about what you're going to eat, yes, toppings, you're going to check some buns. There's talk of all the burger ingredients. You're talking about food, right? Correct. Okay. At 12.14, Chandler sends you this message. What does that say? You set for this? We just need ice? Um, do you know what you needed ice for? Chandler likes ice in his drinks, or sometimes we put it in a pool for the dogs. Did you buy ice and take it to the house? I don't remember at the moment. Do you remember if that day when you went over, you put ice in a pool for the dogs or anything like that? No. And just after that, Chandler sends you another message. Can you read that? And now hydrogen peroxide because I stepped on glass. Is that the first you had heard about any sort of injury? Yes. Now, after this message was sent, did, did you, are we looking at the whole communication or was there like a phone call or anything like that or is this all you knew? I don't remember. You respond, more talk about groceries, I'll bring spicy cheese and pickled uh, jalapenos? Yes. Okay. And again, and I apologize, no one likes to see their messages probably on a giant screen, but it just in general you say, and Jesus, you're kind of just making a joke that you'll bring Jesus with you. Yep. Okay. Um, Chandler responds at 1216, yes please, but then quickly follows up. Can you read that last message? But for real, if your mom has an extra bottle, that would be great, and a Swiffer wet chat. Extra bottle, and were you, was it your belief that he's referring to hydrogen peroxide? Correct. Okay. You respond almost immediately, we have both. He says thanks, and it'll be the end of Exhibit 527. Um, had Chandler ever asked you to bring hydrogen peroxide over before, as far as you remember? Not that I remember. Okay. Did you, in fact, bring him hydrogen peroxide? Yes. Um, where'd you get it? From my mom's house. You took her bottle? Yes. Um, and uh, what about a Swiffer mop? From my mom's house. And you took that to Chandler's? Yes. I'm sure it's been marked in this case. It's exhibit number 528. What is that? My mom's home. That's your mom's? Yes. And is that the Swiffer? Yes. Is that the one you took to Chandler's? Yes. All right, I'll move 528 to evidence. Any objection? No objection. It is received. It may be published. Not anything spectacular, but police eventually came over and asked where the Swiffer was, and that's where it was, and they took a picture, right? Yep. Okay. The bottle of hydrogen peroxide and the Swiffer go with you as you're kind of making your way from Target to Target to your mom's and then to Chandler's that night, right? Correct. Okay. When you get over to um, Chandler's house, do you take the bags of groceries inside or do they go inside at some point? Yes. And the, the hydrogen peroxide? Yes. Okay. And the Swiffer? Yes. Um, when you first go in the house that day, um, did you notice anything off? There was a smoky smell. Okay. Did Chandler tell you more about, did he explain why there was a smoky smell? Because he was um, playing catch with Rizzo in the house and the glass shattered in the fireplace. And so the smell got into the home. Rizzo is a dog, right? Correct, the border collie. How did Chandler say the glass broke with the dog? He was throwing the ball in the house. Um, did you look into that any further? Did you go over to that fireplace and poke around? No. Was there, in fact, a glass panel broken on it? Yes. Okay. 
You stayed the night there that night, that night, right? Correct. Where did you all sleep? On the couches pushed together. And where were those in the house? In the lower living room by the fireplace. Around this time, Chandler had a bedroom, right? Yes. Had a bed? Yes. Did he explain to you why you were sleeping in a kind of like a fort in the living room? To be with the dogs and watch TV on the bigger screen. Had you ever done that before in staying at Chandler's house? No. Um, at the time, did it strike you as odd? No. Okay. That room you slept in, in kind of the couch fort, pushed together. The jury's seen it, by the way. They've seen a, a photographs and a video. Um, that was in the same room as the fireplace that had the broken panel, right? Yes. Okay. It was near the bathroom as well, right? Objection. Was Any it near questions? the bathroom? Uh, you may answer that question. The objection, the question was rephrased in light of the objection. Can you repeat it, please? Was it near the bathroom where you were sleeping? Yes. Okay. That night, Do you recall anything unique or special about sleeping, or was it kind of a normal night other than the fort? The girls, the dogs, Rizzo and Izzy, were riled up because of the fireworks. Was there a TV in that room? Yes. Were you watching TV as you went to sleep? Yes. Do you have, and do you know whether Chandler slept at all that night, or do you not know? I don't know. Okay. While you were with Chandler that night, did he say anything about where his parents were? Up north at their cabin. Had you ever been to the cabin before? No. What did you know about the cabin? Mrs. Halderson's father built it. Um, there's a skull on the outside. It's by a lake. Um, and they'd go up there often, whether to change the window panes or do work on it. Um, now, you stayed there that night. You stayed in the, the couch fort thing in the fireplace room. Um, the next day, did you um, stay there or did you leave? I left. Um, early? Very early. Okay. Um, camera showed you leaving about 6.55. Would that be about right? Yes. Okay. Um, and that day, um, you and Chandler continued texting a little bit, right? Yes. Okay. And I apologize, I just found one more set of messages I wanted to talk about from the night before. Just before you got to the house and you were doing the target pickups, Exhibit 529, is that a series of messages kind of after you got off work? Yes. All right, I'll move 529 into evidence. Any um, objection other than the standing objection? No. They are received. And my apologies for, for just going backwards just a second, but before you got to Chandler's the night before uh, with the groceries, 520, you tell him you're gonna keep your clothes in your car. And Chandler, again, says something about peroxide. Can you read that message? Okay, I do kind of need the Swifter and peroxide and stuff. Okay, so that's the third time that day he had texted you about peroxide to bring it, right? Yes. So the next day you wake up early and you leave before seven. And I think you said you were in communication with Chandler all day. I'll show you exhibit number 531. Is that a series of messages ending on the last one on the second and then starting again on the third? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you it's marked as 530. Um, just in general, what is that photograph? Chandler walking to Fleet Farm. You know that location? 
Yes. Okay. I'll move 531 and 530 in evidence. Any objection other than the standing objection? Um, can we approach real quick? Sure. What were your plans that day when you left early? It was a Saturday. Now we're into July 3rd. My plans for the day? Yeah. What was your general general plans? Um, go to my mom's, hang out with the dogs, uh, Chewbacca and Muffin. Um, see my brother and have Chandler come over later. And that night, what were you going to do? See the fireworks with my brother. Okay. That day when you left, were you aware of what Chandler's plans were? To do chores. Um, he had mentioned chores a couple times. What, what was your understanding of chores? Did he tell you? I don't remember. I'm going to show you. Actually, I already did. 531 is received in evidence at this point. Yes. Okay. Uh, you're texting Chandler in the morning. Um, first one, 732. You say breakfast burrito. What was this in reference to? Uh, what we were going to eat when he came over later. Okay. Something you were going to make or something like that? Yes. Okay. Can you read his message for us? Sounds good. I'm doing shit kind of slowly, to be honest. I'm kind of sore. Okay, that's at 746. You say, I could have helped you this morning? Yes. What was that in reference to? Doing his chores. Okay. Did he ask you to help him? No. Okay. And um, why did you send that message that you would have helped him? Since I thought um, he was having a hard time with his legs and the injury, I could have helped him get it done easier and it would have been as hard for him. He responds, uh, 747, can you read his response? Yeah, I know, I'll be right back, I'm going to the dump. You read your response to that at 748. B, did you load the card by yourself? You can barely walk. I should have at least helped you with that. Chandler tell you what he was taking to the dump? I don't remember. Okay. At some point he texts you though at 749. What does he say? Never mind, it's closed. And you reference it's the holiday weekend. Correct. At some point, um, it's a series of messages from you, and, and then this one comes at uh, 8.38. What do you say there? Hey, did you pass out? That's a question mark. Um, why would you send a message like that, or why did you send a message like that? I was worried because of the head injury. If he's overexerting himself, he might push himself too hard and pass out. Okay. And you had sent him a series of messages that he hadn't responded to. Correct? Correct. Okay. Now, that morning when you left the house early, you, you, you've already testified that he was going to do chores, and then there were some texts about the dump. Um, did Mr. Halderson say he was going anywhere else that you knew of that morning? Not at that time. Did he say anything to you uh, about going to Fleet Farm, that kind of farm supply store out near Windsor that morning? Not that I recall. Um, did you know he was going there? No. I'll move to display 530. You may. Is that Chandler walking into Fleet Farm? Yes. And if that was a screenshot of a video taken 
that morning just after you left, um, you don't know anything about why he'd be there, right? No. Okay. Bill. At some point that day, after you left, um, did you notice that Chandler was in a, did you look at a Snapchat map to look at where he was? Yes. And did you become worried or concerned in some way? Yes. Showing it's been marked as exhibit number 532. What is that? A screenshot of Chandler by the Wisconsin River. Okay. And how's he labeled? What's his name there? Hubby. And what time is that? 8.58. Okay. I think previously I said the second, I meant the, the, the third, we're, we're now in the Saturday, but was this taken on Saturday morning? Yes. Okay. Why did you take this screenshot of Chandler's location? I didn't know why he was there, and so I was curious. Did you know where this location was? Yes. And how did you know where this location was? i have been there before with Chandler. Okay. Tell us about it. Um, it's a little spot where we can park our, our, park our car and walk down to the Wisconsin River for swimming. Okay. How many times do you think you've been there? Two or three times. <sighs> you know, move to publish 532. You may. Was it received? Okay. Is this that screenshot? Yes. And that's the location, right? Yes. What did you do um, when, you, when you saw that? Pardon? Yeah, what did you do when you saw that location? Um, did you, you took a screenshot, did you do anything else with that information? I asked him what he was doing there. Okay. And what did he respond? He was going to pick up CBD and he was passing through there. Okay. Um, he was passing through? Um, did you try to call him? Yes. Okay. Did, were you able to talk to him? Yes. Okay. Do you recall anything else from that conversation about what he said or why he was where he was? Um, he was picking up CBD for the pain. Um, he don't want to tell me that he was picking up CBD because he was scared I was going to be disappointed in him. And around that time that you took that screenshot, was that when all of these messages were being sent that we looked at in this exhibit? where no one was responding to you? Ending with, hey, did you pass out? That was before I took the screenshot. Right. Same, same morning, though? Same morning, yes. Were you having trouble communicating with Chandler that morning between 8 and 9, essentially? Yes. Okay. Prior to, well, I said a different way. When was the last time you were at that location, that out by the Wisconsin River with Chandler, approximately? That summer with um, his friend Smith. Is that Andrew Smith? I don't know his first name. He always just went by Smith. Okay. Um, how did, what was your understanding of how Chandler knew this Smith guy? Uh, they were video game buddies. Okay. Um, the rest of that day, um, July 3rd, I think you had mentioned that there was some plans to meet up later, fireworks, something like that? Yes. Um, tell me about that. You went to some fireworks? Yes, I went to see fireworks with my brother and a friend of his. Did Chandler go with you? No. Did you see Chandler again that day? 
Yes, he stopped by to eat and we watched some TV together and then he left before my brother came home. Okay. Was that your house or your mom's house? My mom's home. Okay. Um, how was he acting that day? Tired. Um, exhausted. Did you ask him about that, being tired? I don't remember. Okay. That night, after Chandler left her house and you went to the fireworks, did you see each other again that night? No. I stayed at my mom's home. And Chandler was not with you? No. Okay. Did you know what his plans were? Did he tell you what he was going to do that night? Take care of the dogs because they get riled up with fireworks and do more chores. This night, or any of the nights we're talking about in question from that whole kind of week period, from the 30th till um, the 8th of July, but specifically this night, do you know of any reason, or did Chandler mention anything to you about a reason to go up near the Wisconsin River at night near Portage? No. Um, and was there ever, in, in your mind, did you ever know of any plan for Chandler late at night, 10 or even later, uh, to be up in that area? No. Okay. Next day, the 4th of July, um, you slept at your mom's, Chandler slept at his house. 4th of July, what's the general plan that day for you? Um, to grab breakfast with my brother's friend, um, have Chandler come over so we could all go to the farm do some shopping with my brother and his friend, and then that night, go back to Chandler's. Okay. There was a plan to go to the farm? Yes. Um, who all went to the farm that day for the 4th of July? Uh, Chandler, myself, my brother, and his friend all went, but my mother, Cress, and Mike and Papa were there as well. When you got to the farm, um, did you, were you with Chandler most of the time? Yes. Okay. Um, did you walk around the property at all? Yes, but not very far since he couldn't walk. What kind of things did you talk about while you and Chandler were walking whatever distance you did around the property? Um, about how far back the property goes, which I talk about often with people. Um, the wildflowers. When you say how far back the property goes, what do you mean by that? Um, whenever I bring people there, I generally point out where our property line ends. To your knowledge, had Chandler ever been there alone? Not before then. Okay. And had he been there often with you um, prior to this? Yes. That night, the 4th of July, um, you're at the farm. What type of things do you do in general at the farm that night? Um, we walk to the chicken coop to see the chickens. Um, we ate with my family. We did a little walk up to um, the pool, and then we later swam in the pool. Did Chandler get in the pool? Yes. And um, how late would you, if you had to guess, how late were you at the, the farm that night? I don't recall the time. Did you leave at some point and go somewhere else? Yes. Um, where'd you go? Uh, I um, drove my brother's friend back to our home with Chandler. Um, and uh, by home, I mean my mom's home. Um, and he left, and I picked up my clothes. Okay. And um, where, was, where did you sleep that night? Is this Sunday, the 4th? Sure. This is the 4th of July. Yep, Sunday. I slept at Chandler's home that night. Okay. So when you say you picked up your clothes, what do you mean by that? 
I started a load of laundry at my mom's home and it was left in the wash and I brought it to Chandler's to dry it in his dryer. And in Chandler's home, uh, where's the laundry at? The laundry room is right next to his room, which is on the upper story where his parents' room and the guest uh, room is. Did you and Chandler do anything else that night once you got back over to the Halverson place? We put my clothes in the dryer and then went to his mom's co-worker's home, Dan. What'd you do there? Uh, lit off some fireworks. Um, anything unique happen lighting off fireworks or is that just a normal thing? Normal for the fourth. Um, Did Chandler burn himself at all? Not that I remember. Do you remember at any point Chandler burning himself the entire weekend or week you were with him? He said when he was making burgers for me, he burned it on the grill. Did you see that or is that what he just said? Pardon? Did you see that happen or just know what he said? That's what he said. Okay. That night, um, did you sleep in the couch for it again or somewhere, somewhere else? On the bed in his room. Okay. Why, did, was there any discussion with Chandler about why now it's okay to sleep in the bed versus on the couch for it? The couch was bothering my back. Okay. Um, that night, um, was it a peaceful night's sleep in, both in the bed or, or was it restless a little bit? It was restless. Tell me about that. Um, the dogs were freaking out with the fireworks. At one point, Izzy, the older dog, who's around 15, fell down the stairs. Um, and it was hard to keep them calm with all the fireworks going off. What did Chandler do when the dog fell down the stairs? Uh, when she fell down the stairs, he laid down with her and was making sure she was okay and petting her. Okay. Uh, were you asleep at that time in his room? No, I wasn't asleep. Okay. Um, were you and Chandler, about how long was Chandler away from you that night while you guys were sleeping? Well, you, or you were in his room, excuse me. Can you say that a little louder? Yeah, you mentioned that Chandler went downstairs uh, with the dog. About how long of a period was he away from you dealing with that? I don't know. Okay. What were your plans the next day? To go to work. Back to Monday, so now it's a weekday, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so you woke up and you left for work early, I would imagine? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna show you an exhibit marked in this case is 533. This appear to be the text messages, at least some of them between you and Chandler that day, Monday, July 5th. Yes. Okay, I'll move 533 into evidence. No Any objection other than the standing objection? They are received. They may be published. Um, I'm going to go to the second page. Um, in general, you're texting about work life, your work, frustrations maybe? Yes. Okay. And at that point, as far as you knew, um, were you going to be at this job that you were at um, long term? I was under the impression I would leave in August. And where were you going to go? Down to Florida. Okay. At 11.30 on the 5th, what does Chandler text you? Don't piss them off till we know for sure we are moving. And you respond, I won't. Correct. He says, okay. You say something else. You say, Greyhound isn't too expensive for a trip to Titusville. You say that at 11.46 on the 5th. What is that about? Um, since Chandler expressed he couldn't fly down to Titusville, we were looking at alternatives for him to go, and I looked at Greyhound prices. Okay. When you say we were looking at alternatives, who was, who was more so looking at alternatives, you or him? Me. You? Yes. You say Greyhound isn't too expensive, no pressure, just saying. Correct. You read what Chandler says? 
Nope, 870 for a straight shot to Orlando. And you respond, what? All this occurring just before the noon hour on Monday. And then Chandler says, um, Uber is 200 to Titusville, meaning the Greyhound plus the Uber. Um, and you say it was 240 to go straight to Titusville. What are you looking at when you're doing this? Um, I was looking at the Greyhound website. So you thought it'd be about 240 bucks. But Chandler texts you. So like a grand to get there with not much of my stuff. Okay. You respond, WTF, where am I? Or he responds, what WTF, where am I looking? And you say, you're very off, essentially is what that message means, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay, is his response. Around this time, you were looking up how Chandler could get to Florida, right? Yes. Show sure, exhibit number 534 in this case. What is that? It's a screenshot of the Greyhound website of me looking up a trip to Titusville for Madison. And you took the screenshot? Yes. Did you send this to Chandler? Yes. Okay. And that was in the middle of those text messages, right? Yes. Move 534 in evidence. Any objection? Can we approach? Sure. Evidence. No objection. And you may publish. Yeah, 534. What are we looking at there? The price for a trip from Madison to Titusville, Florida on Greyhound. You took the screenshot, right? Correct. Who did you send it to again? Pardon? Who did you send it to? Chandler. Mark in this case is number 536, and I'll show you 537. Is that true? 536. Is that another set of messages between you and Chandler that day, July 5th? Correct. What is 535? What is that? Oh, sorry. Um, it's a screenshot of a UW clinic. And did you take that? Yes, I did. In relation to, to what? Why did you take this screenshot? Uh, that's where Chandler said he was going to have his um, appointment for that day. Okay. I'll move 536 and 535 into evidence. Any objection other than the standing objection as to the texts? No objection. They are received. So we're still on that day, July 5th. But we're in the afternoon, and you text me. Can you read that last one? Text me when you get to your appointment. And we're about 1.30, aren't we? Yes. Chandler says, yes, dear. Then a series of messages starting at 1.40, uh, you say, mm-hmm, essentially, 140 again, I love you, it's gonna be okay. Can you read what Chandler says? Either way, you and me are going to be happy. You say? Very true. And then at two o'clock, 201 exactly, uh, Chandler says what? Made it a bit ago and checked in. What was your understanding of where he had gone? to um, the location that I had screenshotted for his appointment. And why again did you take this screenshot for Chandler's appointment? Because um, I was trying to leave work early to be able to take him myself. Okay, but you, you didn't take him that day, did you? No. So I'm showing, I'll move to publish 535 if I haven't. You may. Okay. You looked up UW Health on Science Drive. Correct. How did you get this location, or how did you know this was the location you'd be going to? Chandler told me it was on Science Drive. Okay. At that point, after he says he made it, checked in, uh, at just after two, what does he say? Be right back. 
you say, you got this? Yeah. You ask him about what you're doing later, 219, but then Chandler sends you a message. What does that say? Just need you to know because I have horrible reception. Then it was sent again. Does that look right? Yes. Okay. And just read that again if you could. I uh, just need you to know because I have horrible reception. Okay. Your understanding at that time is that he was at the UW Health Hospital on Science Drive or the clinic? Correct. You respond, okay. Um, then what do you say there? Do they not, I meant to say, do they not have Wi-Fi? Okay. What do you say after that? We can snap if that's easier. Why would that be easier? Because um, they generally have Wi-Fi at all UW Health Clinics, and so if he doesn't have reception on his phone, we could still snap with the Wi-Fi. Now, we're talking about text, you're texting, and now you're texting about snapping, but in the realm of this conversation, a couple questions. When you're texting someone, um, just on the normal app, Apple iPhone, and you're texting someone, absent something crazy, you're not seeing their location, at least in your experience, right? On the Apple location? In, in these text messages, this isn't how you looked at where Chandler's location is, right? It was Snapchat. Correct. Okay. So if someone in your experience wasn't on Snapchat, were able to use Snapchat because they didn't have Wi-Fi or a signal, would you be able to tell where their location is? No. Can you turn off on Snapchat the ability of someone to see your location? Yes. At 2.23, after arriving at the doctor, what does Chandler say to you? No connection to even load Snapchat and no Wi-Fi but I can still get your iMessages. No connection to even load Snapchat and no Wi-Fi. Did that make sense to you? The texts or? That he'd be able to get messages but wasn't getting Wi-Fi or didn't have any service for Snapchat? No. Generally, in your relationship with Chandler or anyone else that you've been involved with or any of your Snapchat friends that you follow their location, um, are you generally able to see their location when they're in normal cities like Madison? Yes. And you work in the healthcare field, right? I do. Generally, Wi-Fi available at most of those places? Yes. In fact, what do you say to Chandler at 224? Weird, they all have it. Have it. But maybe it's your carrier. Okay. What does Chandler say? I'll try and get it on. I'll try and get it on. Some of those messages were duplicates. Do you know if they were sent twice or they were just received twice? ask a better question. Um, that last one, where there were duplicate messages, two in a row. I'll try to get it on, I'll try to get it on. Um, one possibility is someone actually wrote that message out, sent it, and there was some glitch in the system and it got sent to us, right? Objection, yeah. speculation, and lack of foundation. I think the witness has testified to some electronic savvy enough that I think I'll let the question be asked and answered if she can. Sure. Is one possibility of that same message coming through twice that there was maybe a glitch in the system or someone was in bad service area and the message just went through twice? Yes. Is another possibility that someone actually wrote that out and sent it twice purposefully? Yes. Um, So at 3.25, maybe an hour into this, after the bad service, Chandler texts you, can you read these for me? Hi, hon. 
heading home. They took an x-ray and a CT scan, nothing bad on the x-ray. At that point, um, I think you testified you didn't drive Chandler to the doctor's appointment? No. Did you FaceTime with him while he was there? At the appointment? Yeah. Not that I remember. Uh, and you, did you see his location, his Snapchat location? Was he at any doctor's appointment that you could tell? Not that I saw. Okay. Um, and so kind of like I asked you before with the jobs and the school, Absent what Chandler was telling you, did you have any indication that he, in fact, was at any doctor's appointment? Do you know for sure? No. But after Chandler says nothing bad on the x-ray, just read kind of what you responded. A, Florida. And what'd you say? Let me see face. Um, what does that mean to you guys? Um, generally, when we miss each other, we'll ask to see face, which means we'll send each other a snapshot of our face. Okay. After you ask to see his face, how does Chandler respond? CT scan, hun. You ask him what was on it. No bad news. Can you read his response to you? They haven't determined anything, but with my legs, like they were and all, I gotta wait to hear what they determined. You read your first response to that. I mean, soreness and stiffness is normal after whiplash and an accident. And the next one. Especially with how much your fam wouldn't let you move around your house. What did this message mean? Why did you say that? He was, at the time, staying in the basement because there was darker, it was a darker room because he had sensitivity to the light and his mom didn't want him doing much because she was really concerned about him, you know, hurting himself or maybe passing out, lifting things. So he just generally stayed in there. Uh, what you knew about his restrictions in the house, was that just from what Chandler had told you? Yes. Okay. Did you ever have a conversation with Krista about that? No. You read his response at 328. No need to be worried. Just got to wait. And the next one. FaceTime when you get off. Shortly there later or thereafter, you say, so we're not worried. And read his response for us if you could. I am. Meaning he's worried? Yes. And your response? They're sure you're fine. You just could read your messages to him at this point, starting at 329. What? Snap me back. Sir. Are you okay? What does he say? Sorry. And you say? Are you okay? What are these messages? Did you know what was going on? You were sending him a series of messages. Did you have any idea of why he wasn't getting back to you? Not that I recall. Okay. Um, when you say snap me back, even though maybe we didn't see it, does that indicate maybe you, did you send a snap to him around that time? Sorry, did you respond? Pardon? Did, did you send a snap to him around that time? Is that why you said snap me back? I don't recall if I sent one then or if I sent one earlier in the day and he just wasn't sending it back. Okay. At 419 on Monday, July 5th, can you read what Chandler sent to you? I think so. I'm calling Cress. I need some time up at the water. And you say, okay. Correct. Um, what's that in reference to, just so everyone's on the same page? Um... 
so that he can go up to the farm and uh, use the pool. Okay. Did you go with him that Monday to the farm? No, I did not. Why not? I just was going to be at home. Did you, again, I think you already testified that Chandler hadn't been out there by himself before um, to the farm, but did you overhear any sort of conversations with Chandler the, the day prior, perhaps asking to come out? Yes. And who are those, who's having that conversation? What people? My mom and Chris. Did you talk to Chandler? In your recollection, do you have any recollection if you talked to Chandler while he was on his way out to the farm? Yes. Um, what was he talking about? Um, about how he wants to use the pool and if I knew if Cress was home and uh, if I could get a hold of her. Did you see Chandler that night after he left the farm? Yes. Where? At my mom's home. Um, did he say anything to you, or do you remember anything about that night? Um, I remember him telling me he lost a job at SpaceX. Um, Did he say why he lost the job at SpaceX? Um, he said uh, while he was working after the injury, they found a lot of errors with what he was doing, and it was like a page long or something like that. And so they were letting him go. Okay. When you say letting him go, were you under the impression that Chandler had actually started working at SpaceX? Yes. And. Uh, Remotely, or how did that work? Remotely. Okay. Uh, but he, was, he told you he was losing that job that day? Yes. Um, so he talked to you about his doctor's appointment that day? Yes. What did he say about that? Um, he was going to have lifelong leg numbness. Lifelong leg numbness? Yes. I'm going to need you to pull that microphone just a little bit closer. The fans start to go. Um, Anything else about the doctor's appointment or what they told him? Not that I can recall at this moment. Okay. How was he acting when he told you he'd lost the job at SpaceX? Um, sad. Just down. Now, in another matter, at any point around this time, so now we're into Monday, going into Tuesday, Chandler mentioned anything about where his parents were? Um, that they still weren't home and that they were probably still up at the cabin. Okay. Did you have any impression, or were you told from Chandler when they were coming back from the cabin? Um, either Monday or Tuesday morning. Okay. I'm sure it's been marked in this case as exhibit number 537. First couple of match messages on there. Um, does that appear to be, now we're into Tuesday, July 6, messages between you and Chandler? Yes. Okay. I'll move 537 into evidence and ask to publish it. Any objection? No. 537 is received and may be published. On July 6, 2021, around 9, now we're into to Tuesday in the afternoon. What do you say to him? Parents home. Uh, what did that mean to you? Are your parents home? Had you discussed with Chandler, like, where are your parents before this message was sent? Was this a follow-up, or was this the first kind of time you were asking? Follow-up. Okay. And was that, a, like, a verbal conversation where you were asking him where they were? Yes. Okay. What did he, told you, what did he tell you in that verbal conversation? Um... There's poor reception up north and by the cabin, so 
That's why he had been hearing from them. Okay. So you say parents home. Go ahead and read Chandler's response. Uh, 905? No. What do you say? Text Mitch. Mitch is his brother. Correct. Why do you think you should text Mitch? Um, his parents still weren't home at the time they said they would be, and he wasn't receiving many messages from his um, mother that weekend, and that was highly unusual since she texts quite often. Tell me about that. You say um, when, when Krista or Bart would be away from Chandler, you were with Chandler a lot of these times, when they'd be away, right? Uh, would Krista be in communication with Chandler? Yes. How frequently? Uh, very frequently, always asking what our plans are or just asking how we're doing, um, letting us know what she's doing, sending pictures of the dogs. Would it be unusual for Krista to go a number of days without contacting Chandler in your experience of being around Chandler? Very unusual. Um, were you growing concerned at any point? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, like I said, he wasn't hearing from his mother, and usually when they're up north, um, she'll send photos of the cabin or the lake, um, especially if they're doing something. Like, maybe I'll get, like, a little text, but her not checking in with um, Chandler was out of the ordinary, and he wasn't hearing from her, then maybe Mitch heard from his mother because she usually texts them both frequently. The, that Tuesday, um, the 6th now, uh, you worked that day, normal day? Yes. Okay. Um, and other than the messages maybe we talked about with Chandler, did you spend a lot of time with Chandler that day? In the evening. Okay. What'd you do in the evening? Um, he came over to uh, my mom's house because on Tuesdays we do uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, the BOGO uh, deal on their traditional wings, and we watch Legally Blonde. Okay. Now the next day, going into the 7th, now we're on to Wednesday, I'm going to show you it's been marked in this case as exhibit number 538, a series of messages on that day between you and Chandler. Yes. Said yes? Yes. Sorry, we have to answer verbally. And then 540, just more messages that day, but in a different exhibit? Yes. Okay. I'll move 538 and 540 into evidence. Any objection other than the standing objection? No objection, Your Honor. They are received and Thank may you. be published. Um, did, before I show the messages, in general, what was the plan that Wednesday? Was that a work day for you? That Wednesday? Yeah. Yes, it was a work day for me. Okay. I'll show you exhibit number 538. At some point you ask, 538, you ask Chandler, where are you going? Something like that? Yes. Okay. And he says what? Farm, but no one here is still leaving. Okay. When he said farm, what was your understanding of where he was or where he was going? Um, the family farm. Okay. Uh, where you'd been on the 4th of July? Yes. And where Chandler had been on the 5th? Yes. Okay. You kind of invite him to swim if he needs to. Yes. There's a message with, with no content there um, at 1016. Chandler texts you. What does he say? I feel weird. And you why? say what? You say why? Yes. 1054, what does Chandler say? Sorry, I'm stressed, hon. You say it's okay. You can swim if you need to. Do you know if Chandler ended up at the farm that day? Pardon? Do you know if Chandler ended up out at the farm that day? Uh. Yes, by the texts. Okay. And um, do you know how long he stayed or what he did there? No. Were you with him? No. 
Um, were you in communication with anyone else about Chandler going out to the farm that day? Can I ask a better question? Were you texting with your mom about that? Yes. Okay. Did you go out to the farm that day? Wednesday. On Wednesday the 7th? No. Um, after the 4th of July, that weekend in general, uh, remember earlier when I asked you about um, the target pickups you did and the things you brought to Chandler for the cookout? Yes. Um, did you ever take those target bags out to the farm? No. Okay. Um, would that be something you would ever do is bring your, your garbage out to the farm and throw it away in a garbage can out there? No. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked in this case is exhibit number 538. In general, can you just tell me what that is, what it looks like? The garbage bins on the farm in a target bag. Okay. It's five or... 159, sorry, that was 158, this is 159, what is that? The inside of the bin. And these are garbage bins you've seen before while you're out there? Yes. Okay. 160, what does that look like? A target bag. Okay. I asked you earlier, were there labels on those bags that you get when you do grocery pickups? Yes. What is 161? Um, my target uh, pick up number with my uh, first initial, last name, and the date. Okay. And that date is July 1st? Correct. Okay. Let me show you exhibit 164. Um, is that just a little bit more of an overview of that target bag? <clears throat> yes. Okay. 165, same thing. Is that what it is? Yes. 166. Yes. And 167. Yes. Okay. Those are all appear to be, what, they appear to be the target bags that you picked up on the first, those target pickups? Yes. Okay. I would move <clears throat> 158, 159, 160, 161. 164, 165, 166, and 167 into evidence. Any objection? No objection. Objection. Thank you. They are received. Okay. They Just may be published. 158, those are the garbage bins at the farm? Correct. And I think you described what was in front of it, but what did that appear to be? A target bag. Okay. It was 158, 159. What are we looking at there? The inside of the bin. 160, what are we looking at there? Yeah, it's a target bag. I'll jump around a bit. 167, is that just a close-up of the target bag? Correct. I think we had a few of those. 166, 165. But in 164, another close-up of the bag, where I'm pointing at the bottom of the photograph, is that one of those labels? Yes, it is. And in 161, is that a close-up of that label? Yes, it is. Okay. When it says date put on hold, is that the date you ordered it? Yep, the date I uh, ordered it. Okay. Kat, did you dump off that Target bag out at the farm? No. Um, if the bag inside of it had rags, that were covered in a red substance. Would you know, do you know anything about that? No. Do you know where it would have come from? No. Where would that bag have been last, in, in your knowledge? The Halderson resident. You have no, you have any knowledge at all of how whatever was in that bag got in that bag. No. Okay. <clears throat> so 
So around that time that Chandler said he was going back out to the farm, he was stressed, I think you identified 540, which was another set of messages from that same day. I, if I haven't, I'll move 540 into evidence. I think that you have. Okay. And which day, if you can restate the day. Sure. So we're now we're on the, the 7th. Thank you. Okay. Can you read the first message we have on here from Chandler on the 7th, around 1122? Going to police. What does he say next? Can I have $5 for a soda and chips? And what did you respond? I don't have five dollars, B. Okay. Going to police around that time was there a discussion again of why he was going to the police? He asked to report his parents missing. Okay. At this point, what did he told you about his parents being missing? So they you knew they were scheduled to come back, but what did you learn since that would cause Chandler to go to the police? Um his mom had an appoint, uh, appointment for her cancer, and um, it was uh, very important, so it was very unusual for her to miss that. Um, did you have a conversation with Chandler about whether he should or shouldn't make a missing persons report for his parents? Yes. What did you tell him? I said he should. <laughs> They've been gone for so long and he hasn't heard from them. Did he say anything about what was going into his decision on whether to report them missing or not report them missing yet? Can you repeat that? Sure. Did Chandler tell you anything about why he hadn't made a missing persons report at that time? Like until then? Like yeah. why that day? Yeah. Because... Um, he thought they were just running late, and the, the deciding factor to report them missing was his mom missing that appointment. Okay. Now, the next day, July 8th, uh, Thursday, um, you were supposed to go to work, right? Correct. Um, that night, the police had been involved in, in Chandler's house and, and talking to people, right? Correct. Were you one of those people talked to by the police? On Thursday? Yeah. Sure. Can you restate the question? Sure. I apologize. No, no, you're doing great. Did you go with Chandler to report his parents missing? I did not go with him to report them missing. Okay. Do you know, were you over at Chandler's house when the police came over that night? On Wednesday? Yeah. I was not there. Okay. The next day, um, you went to work, and, and tell me about work that day. Um, I was uh, very emotional and upset, and very distraught and I just um, I just couldn't be there because I was really worried about his parents and so um, I, I talked to my bosses about leaving early so I could uh, go be at the house with Chandler and wait until we but, but how long did you make it at work that day before you left? I was there max 30-40 minutes Okay. and where did you go after you left? I um, I um, stopped at my mom's home to grab groceries so I could uh, go to the house and cook for Chandler while we waited. Okay. When you got to the house, um, was anyone else there? Uh, what, when I pulled up, uh, Chandler was outside talking to um, reporters. At any point, did any other members of, of Chandler's family show up at the house? Yes. Who? Uh, Mitch and his fiance. Um, did Mitch stay outside or did he come in? Uh, he came in the home. And what did Mitch do? Um, he uh, walked around the house um, trying to see if there's anything that Chandler maybe missed about his parents leaving. Uh, as Mitch walked around the house, what did Chandler do? Um, he followed him. Followed him? Yes. Okay. Later that day, you were asked to go to the police station down here, downtown, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, was Chandler asked to do the same? Yes. Uh, 
You were brought down here by the police, right? Yes. Were you in the same car or different cars when they brought you down here? I was in a... <laughs> You're doing okay. I was in a different squad car than Chandler. Okay. Um, did you go into an interview room with the police? Yes, I did. And um, did they ask you questions? Yes. Do you know about how long you were down here that night? A couple hours. Did you answer all of their questions? Yes. At that point, um, and I'm asking about what your mindset was at the time, um, did you believe that you or Chandler had done anything wrong at that point? No. Okay. Were you emotional during, emotional during that interview? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you express your emotions sometimes? I cry a lot, or if I get too anxious, um, or emotional, I start vomiting. Those things were happening that night? Yeah. Police asked at times to look at your, your phone and, and photographs and things of that sort? Pardon? And did you show them anything they wanted to see? Anything they wanted, yeah, I gave to them. Why was it important to you to cooperate at that time? Uh, because I, I, I just believed his parents were missing. And I just want them to be found. <laughs> so you can tell us if you need a break or if you want to keep going. I'm almost done, but it's up to you. We well, you can keep going. Okay. Uh, were there any of the police questions that you would not answer? Not that I can recall. Um... And did the police contact you after that night to talk again? Yes. And did you fully cooperate and speak with them that time? Yes. And several times, law enforcement and other people have contacted you to speak about this. And have you cooperated all of those times? Yes. You've met with me personally a couple of times, correct? Yes. Okay. Have you always, in the course of, of this investigation, done your best to tell the absolute truth of what happened? Yes. Okay. Now, I, I, I'm almost done, and, and I have to ask, I'm going to ask a couple questions, and I hope you appreciate why I'm asking them. Were you the person who was with Chandler the most from, let's say, the first, July 1st, all the way through when you were in the police station getting interviewed on the 8th? Were you maybe the person that, at least in your knowledge, were you the person who was maybe with him the most? Yes. And were you the person who, other than Chandler, was, in, based on your knowledge, in the Halderson home the most? Yes. Prior to eventually being told what happened by police and, and perhaps uh, the defense investigators or myself, um, um, did you know that Bart and Krista Halderson had died? No. And Kat, did you have absolutely anything to do with cleaning anything up or their disappearance? No. Okay. No further questions, okay? Okay. I think we should take a break before cross-examination. We've been um, here for a good close to hour and 15 minutes, um, and I, I certainly, it, it, we can't break for the day at this point in time. We'll finish with, uh, with this witness for everyone's convenience, but let's take a 10-minute break. All right, for the jury. Thank you, everybody. Please be seated. Cross-examination, Attorney Vera. Thank you. Kat, is it okay if I call you Kat? Yes. I just have a couple questions for you, so I won't keep you here super long. Um, we saw a lot of screenshots and pictures that you provided law enforcement. Um, it's not unusual for you to take screenshots and have a lot of pictures of your activities, correct? No. And we're just focusing on a particular time frame, but as far as photographs and screenshots, that's about what you do any other month, any other week, correct? Correct. Um, I want to take you back to the Holderson household for a little bit. 
You've probably been there about at least a dozen times. Is that fair? Yes. Probably more. Mm -hmm. So you're familiar with the layout of the home? Yes. And you're probably familiar with how the Haldersons kept the home? Yes. Um, so you're familiar with the fact that they didn't have an AC unit, correct? Correct. Um, and this summer was particularly hot, correct? Correct. Um, so when you were around during the summer, it wasn't unusual for them to have their windows open? Not unusual at all. Um, they were also doing renovations around that time, correct? Correct. Um, we've seen a couple pictures of the home, and there were what I'll refer to as blankets that were covering some of the furniture. That's not unusual, correct? Not at all. And do you know why the blankets were there? Um, Miss Halderson liked protecting the couches from the dogs because they would jump on there, especially once coming outside. Um, so that was probably something that was kept year round throughout the house. The blankets on the couches? Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Um, now, as far as time you spent with the Haldersons, it sounded like you, you spent a lot of time with them there as a, a family, if you will, correct? Correct. Um, so you've probably had a couple meals with them? Correct. And would you agree with me that the Haldersons, Chandler, Brett, and Krista enjoyed cold beverages? Correct. And they, um, you mentioned it during your direct that in one of the freezers there was a bag of ice. Correct. It's not unusual for them to have bags of ice in their household. No, it's not unusual. And is that because there was um, a broken ice maker, or did they even have an ice maker? Um, the ice maker in the fridge in the kitchen uh, was always broken, and they had um, a tiny ice maker, a little portable one, but it, uh, it was slow at making ice. So sometimes um, Chandler would go get some ice from Quick Trip. I think that was the nearest place. Correct. And sometimes Krista would do that too. Correct. Maybe even Bart. Correct. You mentioned the dogs, and we've kind of heard about the dogs for a bit. Um, so the Haldersons had two dogs, correct? Yes, Rizzo and Izzy. Um, and... A couple of times we've heard that maybe perhaps they were kept in the garage when people were coming over. In your experience, would you describe the dogs, and maybe one in particular, as anxious? Yes. Maybe jumpy? Yes. A bit afraid? Yes. And that was, was it both of the dogs or just one dog? Uh, Rizzo. Rizzo. And she's the oldest one or the youngest one? The youngest. Um, and that was just her personality, correct? Correct. Did she, was she nice with you? Did she approach you? It took her a long time, but yes. But eventually she warmed up to you? Yes. And in particular around this time, because it's 4th of July, there were a lot of fireworks going off, correct? Correct. And that just made her anxious, skittiness worse. Correct. And as far as the dogs go, Chandler loved these dogs, correct? Correct. He took good care of these dogs. Correct. You mentioned that I, I think it was Izzy that fell down the stairs and he, he stayed with her to make sure she was okay. Or was that the other dog, Rizzo? Uh, it was Izzy who fell. And as far as Chandler goes, you would agree with me that he's generally a quiet individual. Correct. Reserved. Correct. You probably bring out more of his personality. Correct. Um, we also saw a lot of pictures that you two took together. Was that something that you did often? Correct. And you would also agree with me that he's a pretty nerdy guy. Correct. He loves Star Wars. Correct. Did you already have Chewbacca before you met Chandler, or did he help you out with that? I got Chewbacca about uh, three weeks after dating Chandler, but I named him. So you guys had a bond with that with Star Wars? Yes. Uh, I had an action figure collection that he liked. I have no further questions for you. Thank you. Any redirect? Um, can I approach briefly? Promise. Sure. Take long. All right, back to you, Council. Hello. 
You mentioned the um, Aldersons had a small ice machine in their home. Yes. Um, how much, when you say small, what do you mean by that? Like what, how quickly would it produce ice? Um, maybe like about three of these wide and maybe three stacks. It was, it was um, not that big and um, it created little ice cubes that you would just scoop and put in your drink and you would have to constantly add water to keep it going. Sure. Um, the July 1st or, or July 2nd, um, around that time, you said the Haldersons sometimes would buy ice, though, if they needed more? Yes. What did, around that time, do you know of any reason why Chandler would have needed 20 or more pounds of ice, uh, more than what was be able to be produced at the house in that ice maker? Can you repeat that? Right. Do you know of any reason that Chandler, uh, for his own purposes, would have needed 20 or more pounds of ice around July 1st this year? that I can think of, no. And around that time, you had brought a bag of ice to the house too, right? Yes. Okay. So there was the ice maker, there was the bag you brought, bought, and then if I ask you, if Chandler had bought two more bags, there's a lot of ice in the house around that time. Yes. No further questions. And I'll just note for the record that I think it's fair to say the dimensions was approximately a foot by a foot cube is what I'm gathering from my angle of, of view. Any problem with that? No. Anything, uh, any dispute with that from the defense? No. May this witness be excused? She is excused. Is she released from her subpoena? She is not. All right, that means, uh, Miss, that you are finished testifying here today, but you're still under the state's subpoena and the defense, if the defense has one, and that you can't discuss your testimony with anyone, and you'll have to wait to find out from the party subpoenaing you when you're released or whether you're being recalled. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. You can go ahead and exit. We'll take one more witness. <laughs> 